For such a small device, the Nintendo Switch can do a whole lot the average player doesn't even know about. Want to engage in a lightsaber duel? Use the Switch vertically? Tap into some true VR that isn't made with cardboard? Well, then let's unlock this question block to unveil some of the console's biggest secrets. The best part? They're all legal. No homebrew, no hacks, just some good old Easter eggs, secrets, and tricks that will completely change the way you use the Nintendo Switch and Switch Lite. Play Switch on PSVR. Okay, let's get right into it by starting our Nintendo Switch video with a discussion on the PS4. That's right, if you're lucky enough to own the Switch, a PS4, and the PSVR, then you can take your gaming to a whole other level. Forget a big screen TV. Really immerse yourself into games by getting the ability to play any Switch game using the PSVR headset. Here's a quick rundown of how to get the task done. The Switch should be in docking mode with the HDMI output cable available. Unplug the PS4 HDMI cable from the PSVR headset set and replace it with the Switch HDMI output cable. Keep the PSVR HDMI out cable connected to the television. Power on the PS4 and the VR headset. Next, power on the Switch, put on the headset, and voila! You are now using the Switch in VR. Players get truly immersed into the world thanks to the PSVR headset's incredible display. And no matter how much you move your head, the screen tracking won't change so you can relax and stay focused while you play. Vertical Gaming with every new Nintendo console comes the ability to tap into a well of retro games. One of the main problems with the Switch is that the ultra-wide screen of the Switch kind of squishes down arcade classics like Pac-Man and Dig Dug. Instead of squinting or limiting the amount of useful screen space you have while you play, gamers have the option of playing in vertical mode. The best way to do this is with the Flip Grip. The simple adapter allows your Switch to be held vertically and features spots for easy Joy-Con access as well. With the Quick Flip, the games fill up the screen and more developers have started enabling the vertical views when the Switch is in a portable mode. Arcade archive games like Punch-Out and the Donkey Kong series are a million times better in the vertical mode and the flip grip makes the whole thing much easier to handle. One of our favorite ways to use the vertical mode with pinball games like Pinball FX. See the whole table and enhance your simulation with these games using the vertical mode of the Switch. Joy-Con lightsabers. Ever since the first Star Wars came out, fans have been trying to find ways to create a realistic lightsaber battle in real life. While the Wii certainly tried with Star Wars The Clone Wars lightsaber duels, a little Easter egg hidden in the Nintendo Labo kit showcases how much more potential the next-gen console has for a great Star Wars game. If you own the Labo variety kit, head over to the Discover section of the game and select the Joy-Con menu. Once you reach the end of the tutorials, stay on the menu and look for the Turn the Joy-Con On option at the bottom of the screen. If you have a left Joy-Con, press the Up button and the L to activate the Joy-Con. With a right Joy-Con, press X and then R. Boom! Two lightsabers are activated on the screen and the colors will actually match the color of your controller. Secondary switches. While the secret lightsaber battles make you want to duel with your friends, you'll quickly be making up with them when you realize how the Switch allows gamers to share digital games. With the release of the Switch Lite, Nintendo knows people will be owning multiple Switch devices, sharing consoles, and downloading a whole lot of digital games. This is where the secondary account comes in. With a secondary account, a player has the ability to access any Switch game from the primary account as long as they have an internet connection. So while it may seem backwards, the Switch you leave docked at home should be considered the secondary account because it's likely always connected to the internet. With the secondary account, two players can even play the same game at the same time and connect to multiplayer action. There's no need to swap cartridges because all the digital titles have become available on the secondary device. Nintendo may not advertise the whole secondary console thing, but they offer a ton of tutorials on the process. By linking up Nintendo accounts, you can share games on multiple Switches and even allow new game downloads to instantly appear on the connected console. Boost Mode While loading times are pretty minimal when compared to back in the day, the wait can be annoying for bigger titles like Breath of the Wild. One of the best solutions? Boost Mode While you may constantly avoid annoying updates to both the firmware and specific games, don't hold back. One of the biggest updates in 2019 quietly snuck in Boost Mode. While the game loads, the mode overclocks the processor to help speed up load times, and tests have confirmed it's at least 33% faster. The best part? Just simply having your games updated will automatically activate 
activate the boost mode. You will instantly notice a difference in load times, especially with official Nintendo games that support boost mode. Hate waiting between Mario Kart tracks? Well, wait no more because the boost mode has you covered. Once a game is fully loaded, the processor speed goes back to normal, but the Genius update is just one of many ways Nintendo is trying to improve the life of a gamer. Adding app friends. Nintendo is constantly finding new ways to innovate and change gaming, but they certainly don't have the best methods for gamers to actually play together. There's nothing worse than finding someone you want to game with and having to trade your endless friend ID number. Womp womp. Thankfully, besides the tedious friend ID, there are some alternative ways to connect with others. Playing on the same Wi-Fi network? Well, easily add some friends using the local users list. Have you made some buddies through Nintendo apps like Super Mario Run or Mario Kart Tour? Well, you can access those friends through your Nintendo account and easily add them to the Switch. Same goes for anyone on a social network. Simply connect your Switch account to platforms like Twitter and you'll have the ability to find friends through there as well. After you've finished a session in a game like Splatoon 2, you could also check out the recently played list and add a few new friends that way. So once you use this alternative method to branch out, you will be loaded with Switch friends in no time. Joy-Con Finder. There's nothing worse than getting ready to play a game and you only have one Joy-Con. Ugh. The little controllers are a brilliant innovation, but they can be harder to find than car keys sometimes. And that's even with all their bright and bold colors. But Nintendo is not dumb. They knew that going into it, and thanks to the HD Rumble features, the company found a way to incorporate a lost tracking feature for that missing Joy-Con. Within the Switch Joy-Con menu, select Find Controllers. Simply select the precious controller that's disappeared. With the one remaining, hold down the shoulder button. You'll hear the missing controller vibrate for as long as you hold that button down. A little game of hide and seek should help you track down the Joy-Con pretty quickly. Joy-Con Smartphone Controllers Once you've located all your Joy-Cons and had some fun playing with the Switch location features, learn how else you could use the controllers, like as an Android smartphone controller. The Joy-Con is the perfect little controller for on-the-go gaming, and the Bluetooth technology makes it a pretty simple thing to connect to your phone. There's no hacks or crazy firmware changes needed. Turn the Switch completely off if the console is within range of your cell phone. Press the ZR and ZL buttons at the same time on the Joy-Con. You've just entered pairing mode. Go ahead and load up the Bluetooth connection mode on your mobile device and boom, there's your Joy-Con connection. Much like the Switch, the single-use Joy-Con is ideal for classic games, but you may not have had the proper controller layout for more advanced games like Fortnite. Another thing to remember though, you can only connect a single Joy-Con. You cannot put two together to recognize them as one controller like you can on the Switch. Either way, the single Joy-Con makes it a lot easier to whip out a controller for some gaming on the go. Anything is better than on-screen touchscreen controls. Changing regions. Game availability is a lot different than it used to be. Games were often heavily separated by region, delayed in certain countries or not available at all. For a system like the PS2, a chip or hack was needed to make the console region free. Well, thanks to the Switch, your geolocation doesn't matter because you have the option to set your Switch to any region at any time. While probably over 90% of games are available worldwide, there may be titles exclusive to regions like Europe or Japan. The process is actually pretty simple too. Just create a second user account and assign it to the region that you want. So when you go on your Switch, you'll simply select the account with the region you want to play in. The best part, you're able to play foreign Switch cartridges and browse the eShop. It's always frustrating when another country gets a game released ahead of your own. Well, that's no longer a barrier. Find a Japanese Switch cartridge on eBay for a significant amount cheaper than the US version? Well, purchase away and enjoy the discounted game. The open region option prevents hacks, third-party apps, or unnecessary tweaking just to enjoy international games you love. USB keyboards and charging devices. When the Switch is out of the dock, there are so many cool things you can do with it. The little USB port allows for a lot more than just charging options. For example, if your phone battery is low, the Switch acts as a charging bank and will supply your phone with a little boost of power. It's really just up to whether you think losing out on a few more rounds of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is worth the trouble. To make the charge work, you need either a USB-C to USB-B connection cable or vice versa. Most standard USB charging cables with USB ports will not do the trick. Sick of tapping the little letters and numbers on the digital switch keyboard? Well, the port also works with a number of USB keyboards as well. Plug it in and type away. The whole thing makes typing in games like Minecraft so much easier. As long as you find a comfortable way to set up the portable switch in your keyboard. The key to these connections is the USB-C connection port. Some keyboards may need adapters to work correctly, but there are a lot of modern tablet keyboards with built-in USB connections anyway. 
So now that you know these tricks, what will you check out first? Excited to play Find the Joy-Con, or are you excited to play some Japanese original games? Any other great tricks we didn't mention? Well, let us know in the comments, and stick around the gamer for more great video game content. We're releasing new videos every couple of days, so thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up with us here at The Gamer. See you later.